You were sitting with one of your bosses in your office. It had been a rather pleasant day. And it was while planning an extension on the eastern side of your estate, when Velvet, the youngest member of the V's, had barged in unannounced. You had prepared tea, something your visitors scoffed at. Holmes, babe, I love you, like a non-blood-related sister, but... What's this tea shit you're always pulling? My regular clients are usually in a very emotional state. I'd like to give them an aura of calm so they can sit there and their issues can be given more clearly. Velvet grumbled, picked up the cup, and took the tiniest sip her mouth allowed. Yuck! You forgot to add sugar. Velvet narrowed her eyes and with the biggest of scouts took a handful of sugar cubes from a tin box you had pushed over to her. And with the biggest of scouts took a handful of sugar cubes from a tin box you had pushed over to her. She threw them into the cup. And after another sip, threw the cup at the wall behind you, shattering it. So since you're done poisoning me, she shouted, before sitting back down, crossing her arms as you could hear the dripping tea behind you. I need you for a job. You nodded patiently. Without looking at you, she slapped a photo of a demon on your desk. With a curious look, you took it in your hands. I want this bastard to suffer. Your eyes met. There was a little spittle coming out of her mouth. She was really fired up. I need to know more. And... You know I hate it when people cuss around me. Contain yourself, or I double my rate for this. Growling and then pouting, Velvet began to explain that the demon in the picture was responsible for destroying the value of countless souls via a Ponzi scheme. It was meant as a bailout program to increase a soul's value to then allow the purchasing off of any contracts, but instead it quite obviously caused the opposite effect. Not only did this hurt the business of the affected overlords and dealmakers, but also ruined the demons' lives even further, while empowering just him. I know you love a good sob story, Sammy, babe. So I even got you one of the victims. Chase one of my girls. Starla! Through the door of your office came a rather pitiful yet very attractive woman. For succubus, you commented quiet, enough for Velvet to hear, but not the demoness. A false succubus, just like you. False succubi were closely related to their hellborn counterparts, or by much, much weaker. Succubi gained power through intercourse. It strengthened them especially their hypnotic abilities, with no true upper ceiling either. This ability allowed them to seduce men, women, undecided, and even asexuals. Which false succubies couldn't do. You had no hypnotic abilities. Your kind was just unnaturally beautiful. Which immediately made you feel a certain kinship with the woman who just entered... And your comment even earned you a supportive smirk from Velvet. You pointed at the chair next to your boss. She sat down. Tell me what happened. Her lower lips quivered. Tell her for fuck. Velvet crossed her arms, stopping herself. <sighs> Just say what you told me, got it? No one will hurt you. Obviously not used to Velvet speaking in a normal tone with her, Starla looked at her for a few seconds before explaining. My entire family has been dragged to hell over the years. Our uh, clan is small due to the exterminations. Right now it's me, my mother, and two of my grandpas, and... And... She sniffled. He used to be my little brother. You nodded carefully, 
It was rare demon families remained families in hell, so this was interesting. Because of... Her mouth quivered, and she broke out into tears. Bavard sighed impatiently, while you offered the demoness a tissue. After blowing her nose, she continued. All our souls belong to multiple overlords. It's how we survive. But my little brother, he always was unable to accept being beneath someone. So he took an opportunity to increase the value of his soul and he sold his gold ticket to this monster for some empowerment program. Called it an investment. Have you ever heard of Ico? You nodded. Angel blood, right? Angel blood was sometimes left behind after an extermination, and some demons doped themselves on it. Of course, the effect wasn't proven to actually work, but some demons reported gaining immense strength from it. But the fact that no overlord you knew used angel blood kind of was proof that it was all a sham. The woman then went on to explain that the scheme involved the acquiring and selling of Ikor with an incredibly high buy-in price. Of course, the goal for the schemer wasn't to actually get the Ikor, but to have the demons be outside during the extermination and dying while collecting it. Which was exactly what happened to this poor woman's brother. What a piece of shit. The demon was selling out his own kind for profit to the angels. But then, the atmosphere in the room changed. No longer did Starla cry out of sadness, but out of rage. She fell forward out of the chair, scaring Velvet, and even you raised your head to get a better look at her out of concern. She screamed at you to punish this monster, that every second of pain he received would be like a band-aid for her wounded soul. But honestly, the demoness didn't even have to enter your office. The moment Velvet mentioned the scheme, you already were on board. With a caring expression, you went out of your chair, approached the demoness, gently taking her hand. I promise I will deliver the justice you and your family deserve. Acquiring the demon was the least issue, really. But for the backing of V's, any investigation into who lived where was as easy as having a quickie with Vox when you were a tall redhead. Which, well, you were. Using the shadow puppet trick taught to you by Alistair as a reward for dealing with trash for him, you infiltrated the man's compound. The demon lived on the outskirts in a small mansion acquired through his little schemes. And they surprised him in the bathroom. He was knocked out and brought to you into your own estate. Here, he was blindfolded and strung up. While you contemplated about how to take care of him, Velvet, as the person requesting the torture of the demon, was sitting in an observation room. Normally she didn't attend. Your ways of punishing the guilty... They were too messy for her liking. So extra for her, you decided to use a method that was less splish-splash, and actually one that you wanted to use for a while, but never had the opportunity to do so. The demon was named Rondo, and he was a second son demon. Second son demons were the weaker counterparts to firstborn demons. They had the same characteristics. Fake muscles, no belly button, and seven fingers on each hand. Of course, firstborn and second sons were mere titles for their demon race. They didn't actually have any cultural significance. And they were quite common too. Especially in the envy layer of hell. You snapped your fingers, making three shadow puppets appear. You had the perfect idea for punishment. The demon awoke slowly, 
he grunted, burped, releasing a mist that smelled of alcohol and blood. Morning, tiger. He purred from behind his ear. The demon opened his eyes, immediately on high alert due to the pain of being strung up. Where am I? Did, uh, did I party too much? Finally he stopped, his eyes slowly turning right to where your face was resting on his shoulder. Who the fuck are you? But instead of responding, you just reached around the shoulders, your fingers taking hold of his chin as you forced him to look at the device, your shadow puppets that brought you. What is that? The demon shook in his binds. Uh, what are those? This is where terrible things will happen to you, tiger. You slowly walk towards the device, while the demon cursed and wiggled in his binds. My name is Miss Holmes. I'm a torture sommelier. It is my job to deliver true justice to people. You stepped around the device, folding your arms on its back. Torture Zoma what? You have heard a lot of people. Suckled on their swords like a toddler on the teats of its mother. Ruining their unlives in the process even more. That's not nice. The demon scoffed. What do you care, bitch? You're in hell too. I'm considering your get-up in this place. You profit from equally horrendous people. <laughs> I didn't say I'm a saint. I do get paid for this as well. I just really like hurting people. Really, really bad. But at the same time, I still have a conscience, and I just can't bring myself to harm anyone unless they deserve it. And you deserve it. He puffed up his cheeks, throwing his entire body weight into the ropes holding him in place, only for him to scream in agony as he managed to dislocate his own shoulders. He screamed, the skin around them quickly becoming red. Like a heavy noodle he hung there, and even you raised an eyebrow. Hmm, anger issues, huh? Hmm, that's good. He shouted more curses at you. Yes, yes, keep shouting. That's actually exactly what I want from you. You snapped your fingers, causing three shadow puppets to pull him from his position. As he wiggled and struggled like the worthless worm he was, you couldn't help but smirk. You know, you actually helped me. I doubt without dislocating shoulders you'd fit into little Bessie here. You took a step back, letting the shadow puppet stuff the demon into the bronze and ball. So, before I close your casket, how about a little history lesson? You said, lowering your head so far the demon could feel your breath tickle over his nose as you spoke. This is a torture method from ancient Greece, quite famous indeed. As you can see, it is a hello replica of a pole. In a moment, I will push your head towards the little tube over there. I'll probably crack a few ribs in the process, but that will be the least of your worries at that point. Now, due to the little space, you won't be able to move your head, which is wanted and desired, as the bolt's head is connected to a series of tubes. When you scream, we should be able to hear it moo in the process. Your lips were decorated with pure glee as you tightly dug your fingers into his neck. With all your might, you pushed his head into the device until your entire arm was within it. Pulling it out, you just stepped back. Now, now, be quiet, I'm not done explaining. The demon, however, refused to listen for obvious reasons, and so you simply sighed. You are done with him. You took the lid and slammed the brazen ball shut. Ugh, 
didn't even get to tell him this one is made out of copper rather than bronze. You then took a lock from your pockets, which you used to seal the bolt's door. With a smile, you stepped towards the observation room, double-sided mirror, holding up the key. My dear observers, you said it that way to keep Velvet anonymous. This key will grant you this demon's mercy. I will put it in your care once I leave. And it will be up to you when you believe he suffered enough and you found the closure that you need. You did this with all your victims. It's just rare that you announced it. You just did that because Velvet liked it when you gave her this power over someone in your care. She probably was grinning from ear to ear right now. You then gave the key to a shadow puppet, who rushed out the door, delivering the key to Velvet. Next, you walked back to the bowl. The puppet said prepare the Bunsen burner. There was a reason you constructed the bronze bowl out of copper. Similar to bronze, copper had a low melting point, though the Bunsen burner would definitely not reach that despite it being a little bit bigger than those found in high school laboratories. It was constructed precisely in accordance to your needs and would replace the fire pit the old Greeks used. You called it a modern twist. Of course, the Bunsenburner had less power than even the fire pit. As such, you used copper due to conducting heat as well as electricity quite well and just a tiny bit better than bronze. Not by much, but still, you could feel the difference. It merely had a brass coating to look pretty. Most devious of all, the bowl could be attached to a rechargeable battery. From the moment you turned on the flame, a shadow puppet would occasionally switch between the two methods of pain at an unrhythmical intervals. But for now, you enjoyed your... Steamed guest. With a visage of pure joy, you stepped back as the flame did its thing, quickly heating up the bronze and ball. And then. Your eyes widen with delight. Your heart beating faster, a smell of burnt flesh entering your nostrils. <makes noise> Chuckling, now laughing hysterically, you then left your guest in the room. It would take a few hours for him to die in there, and once his body regenerated thanks to being a demon in hell, well... All he'd be met with would be the mooing pint of the brazen ball. You stepped outside, feeling the cold air of the hallway brush over your face. You were ecstatic, laughing, for a very particular reason. Excited in a way you usually only got when Vox was kissing your feet, or you were pegging Val. The reason for that was simple. You place your hand on the observation room door. Velvet, you said, regaining your professional tone almost immediately. But as you opened it, your eyes fell upon a rather peculiar yet expected sight. As Velvet was using the key you had given her via the shadow puppet to do naughty things to herself. Shit, babe, can't you fucking knock? You cross your arms. It's my house. Velvet scoffed, throwing the wet key at you. You dodged it by tilting your head a little to the right. Velvet was angrily blushing and looking away from you. Looks like the room's microphone is working. I know, babe. Velvet grinned as she stared at the ball. So, I can smell it from here. You're just as excited as me now, aren't you? There was a slight shiver in her tone. 
She leaned back with an elegant and kind of slutty pose. Tell me, that's an order. Chuckling, you entered the room, closing the door behind you, sitting down on a chair next to hers, and you mused. Ordering me in my own home. Hmm. Well, I'll accept it for once. So, so, the reason I'm so excited is that brazen bolts have been used a grand total of once in all of history to kill their creator. Other than that, they were only used as intimidation. Most people saw the bull and the fire logs beneath and already crooked another threat. Similar to the Iron Maiden, it was very rarely used, if ever. You humped pleased. <laughs> and I feel much joy by writing history and using it. And I'm even more pleased at the fact that it actually moves. I was honestly very skeptical about that. You know I can help you with that. You amused. Oh yeah. Well, I know that you like helping me, babe. You leaned against her, placing your hands on her shoulders. You flashed your teeth. But you know that I demand only one thing in return, right? Velvet grumbled. Go on, say it. Ugh, I have to be subservient to you. Your boss sighed. Fine, Sammy. She said, looking away. But only because you gave me a good show. <laughs> you grabbed her collar. With a quick pull, you pressed her lips against yours. The fashion queen of hell had amazing lips, even softer than Valentino's. Maybe it's because she was a woman, maybe it's because she was the demon she was, but despite her being a lanky little thing, she was as soft as a kid's toy. And you loved treating her like one. Her body was both quite stretchy, as well as her joints could be twisted into any direction without pain. Like a living love toy. Ugh, too bad she had the personality of a street cat. But you love taming this beast. She was first to try shoving her tongue into you. Dead banning, you bit down. She squirmed in pain before managing to pull away. How often do I have to tell you? You do what I tell you to do. You don't act on your own. Got it? She wiped her mouth. She gave you a look that was absolutely adorable. If anyone else tried this with her, she would annihilate them. But you? Were. Needed. You were essential. You had power over her, simply by virtue of being the Vis Torture Sommelier. Ugh, how much she hated you. And, uh, how much she loved you. Now, let's try again. Okay, Miss Holmes. She hissed. Good girl. As a reward, you shoved your hand between her legs, causing her to squeak and squirm in your grasp. Good girls get rewarded. And after finally pulling away from her, off of those clothes, that's an order. You commanded before suckling on your fingers. Her taste was always strangely sweet putting her leaks above her colleagues. Honestly, Velvet might be your favorite of the three, if it wasn't for that horrible personality of hers. But... You'd train her. She'd get in line eventually.
Hey, thank you for making it to the very end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it and please remember to like and subscribe. But before I say goodbye, I would like to shout out all of my lovely channel members, especially my darling Stuarts, HuskyHD17, Bella Mare, Mystic Jade 111, Giovanni Moretti, Twilight Mia, Angry Boxman, Hella, Melofia, Anonymous Weep, and Nicodemus D. I couldn't do this without your help. Thank you for your continued support. Anyways, I hope you have a nice day. Goodbye.